Eric Darling here with uh, Eric Darling Data, named one of the top 1,001 uh, sexiest SQL Server consulting companies uh, in the world <clears throat> by, uh, <laughs> by, by Beer Gut Magazine. <laughs> uh, and uh, on this lovely Sunday, and it, it, it is Sunday, and so am I, uh, I am enjoying a gin fizz of sorts. Mmm. Mmm. What a delicacy. <clears throat> Today we're going to talk about when you should use table variables. Table variables uh, get sort of an understandably uh, bad rap for a lot of reasons. You know, you get the, the, the forced serialization when you modify them. You get the, the crappy estimates unless you recompile or throw some hokey trace flags at them. You get the, um, what do you call it? What was the other one? There was another good one I had. Oh, yeah. SQL Server has no idea what's in them. Not only, the, not only does it have no idea how much is in them, but it has no idea what the contents of that much is. And that's not good. Often not good when we care about things like queries that have good cardinality estimates and perform well, and plan shape makes a, makes a huge difference. But uh, they're there for a reason. They, they do not exist just to make consultants money finger-wagging at you, <laughs> poor people who, uh, who keep using them <laughs> for uh, no particular reason. Uh, they do exist for a good reason. And uh, I've, I've talked a little bit about how they help when you uh, have very high frequency execution for queries. Uh, but what I didn't explore then was uh, what happens when you also have very high concurrency along with the high frequency execution. And that's what we're going to look at today. Now, I am going to use a, uh, a couple store procedures that I used uh, in the past to look at how these two different types of objects perform. Uh, one of them is a temp table test. And, um, you know, I know it's not maximally, maximally realistic, but that's fine because all it has to do is show you behavior. Not everything is going to be 100% true to life, real world, this is what happened demo, this, but it just shows you what happens in the real world when you use different objects for different purposes. And this is the whole point. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I'm just going to leave now. Go enjoy my, my gin fizz. So this, uh, this one here is a temp table tester, and we create a temp table. I don't know how I missed a semicolon. This is sloppy of me. It's been gone. going to kill me next time I see him. I'm going to get assassinated. Uh, so actually, no, it's, it's not even my fault because I, I use SQL prompt and I hit uh, insert semicolons. And I don't know what, what was going on with that. I don't know. Maybe SQL prompt is dumb. But all this does is create a temp table, uh, insert into the temp table, and then we're done with it. Uh, this one down here, look, see this, the semicolons here. I don't know what what the <clears throat> H-E double, double dog legs happened. No, but this one declares a table variable and then does the exact same thing. Now, of course, we have to pass something in to these store procedures, and uh, I don't want to have to do that in a weird way. So what I did is I wrote a wrapper store procedure uh, for, for these things, and uh, it's called the temp test wrapper. And, uh, I'll have all this code somewhere, I mean, probably, probably in the blog post. I'm not going to stick all the code in the YouTube description that's annoying uh, but it'll be it'll it'll accompany the blog post along with some links to other things that I've written about table variables in the past uh, including the miraculous video where I I test running these store procedures in a loop <laughs> won't that be fun for you uh, so yeah so this thing uh, declares a uh, declares a variable and uh, we set that variable to some random number between uh, one and the max ID in the post database, which is for Stack Overflow 2013 is currently 21195018, in case you had trouble reading that number. And then, uh, you know, if the test procedure is, oh, you know, uh, temp, temp table test, then we'll run temp table test. And if the test proc that we pass in up here is that, then we'll run that. And I guess I, I should, I mean, I don't really need to make it Unicode. I guess I, I guess I should for completeness, right? And make sure I don't go against any of, my, any of my own best practices mismatching data types. Not that this is going to matter, but whatever. I don't want to get hoisted by my own petard or whatever that's called, unitard. Um, and, but, you know, if we run these things, we get query plans turned on over here. If we, uh, if we test these things out and run them, uh, we will get <coughs> an execution plan that uh, accurately 
portrays what we wanted to do. We have an insert into our pound sign temp table and an insert into our at sign table variable. We are all good. So what I'm going to do next is run use OStress from the lovely and talented RML utilities. And I'm going to use that to uh, run a bunch of concurrent threads 1,000 times. So 300 sessions for 1,000 iterations. And I just want to make a lot of busy work for the server. There's no other point to it, just plain busy work. And let's go over here and let's uh, plug that into OStress and get off that off and running. And let's come over to here to SP who is active and we're going to use this get task info parameter to get uh, additional weight stat information. We see a whole bunch of page latch EX weights. And if we run this a whole bunch of times, uh, that's what we're just going to see piling up, right? They're, maybe they're not terribly long. Maybe there's no, not the worst, but you know, we can obviously see the, the tempdb contention occurring. We can see SQL Server trying to figure out where to put stuff, where things go, where do you belong? I don't know. I don't know where to go anymore. So if we keep running this, we're just going to keep seeing it, right? It's obvious signs of contention. Now, if uh, we have code where it matters that, uh, that like, you know, what, what we're putting into our, our temp table, we might just have to deal with some of that contention. We might just have to, you know, live with it because we might need some of the uh, the benefits of temp tables that table variables don't have. You can put data into them in a, in a parallel query. You can uh, you can create in, uh, indexes on them that actually make a big difference because you know you get statistical information. You get all accurate. Well, I mean, you know, usually accurate row counts. You know, there are some you know, kind of iffies around um, uh, temp tables getting cached in store procedures. But as I always say, if that is your biggest problem, you should just go on vacation and find a new job where you will have interesting problems to solve again. Uh, but if you look, <clears throat> that whole thing took about 40 seconds to complete. 39.368, which is close enough to 40 for me. And I'm going to order a 40 later. It's remembrance of this fine demo. Uh, but next, let's go and look at some table variables. Right, let's, for good luck, we're going to clear that out. And now we're going to run the table variable version come back over here and let's start running who is active and we'll start seeing that wait info column it doesn't have anything in it right? we're not really waiting on anything and uh oh we're done in eight seconds so if we were measuring this workload right and I know it's not not the most realistic thing in the world but you know let's just say you have a lot of user sessions that come in do something quick and get out well if you know, the, the idea is to make those user sessions as quick as possible because you don't want them hanging around doing things. Well, then we need to maybe consider the type of temporary object that we're using to push those queries through. So uh, table variables do have very good uses in this case. We, in this case, you know, we had an 8.3 second uh, workload versus, what was that, almost 40 seconds, if I'm remember, remembering correctly, and I, I, I should remember correctly because now I have to order a 40 later in remembrance of that fine query. So I'll let you know how that smells in another video. But anyway, uh, you know, uh, table variables do get a lot of flack, and I th you know, rightly so. They, they have probably messed up f performance for people uh, more times than they have solved a big performance problem. But this is a case where uh, I would absolutely use one. It's a little bit of a niche case, but there are definitely industries and there are definitely workloads where this kind of thing is, uh, you know, the normal, the norm, the normal, the norma. This is the norma gene. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, if you have that type of workload where you have very, very high frequency execution and uh, you need to push a bunch of tiny little queries through very very quickly table variables just might be the solution for you now of course like you know one step further is you know the in memory table variable which i blogged about recently uh i suppose i should put a link to that somewhere too um i don't know where it's going to end up though I, I don't like to make promises about putting things in the youtube description because um quite often uh uh i, I forget <laughs> And I'm, I'm bad about remembering to go back and do it until someone leaves a comment and says, hey, you said you were going to put this in the thing, and then you didn't. I'm like, yeah, sorry. It happens to me all the time. I'm forgetful. That's why I blog a lot and record videos so I can remember.
I don't have to remember. Anyway, uh, I'm going to get back to my gin fizz and my Sunday because I am Sunday, and I will see you in uh, another video another time. Thank you for watching.